So what is live streaming and why should you care? Well, there's lots of reasons and we're going to cover them in this video. Now, first of all, let me give you a brief introduction to live video streaming. Live video streaming means that you can stream video live from a device, generally a smartphone, to anybody else who happens to have the app installed either on their smartphones or in the case of the software we're going to be talking about in this video, which is Facebook Live, on their computer or tablet device as well. And having live video streaming is a bit like having your own TV station. You can broadcast your own programming anytime that you want to anyone who has the equipment that's necessary to pick it up. However, unlike with a real TV station where you need a studio with uh, lots of cameras and lighting and all sorts of other stuff, and you need a control gallery with lots of expensive equipment and highly trained technicians, and you need a stonking great transmitter tower to transmit the signal to a local area, or you need a satellite uplink if you're going to be broadcasting your TV station on satellite or cable, with live video streaming, and in particular with Facebook Live, all you need is a smartphone and the app. Now, of course, the concept of video streaming has been around for a while. Skype, in particular, has been a feature for many years. And a lot of people say, well, isn't Skype live video streaming? Well, yes and no. You see, Skype limits the number of people that you can share video with. You can have a one-on-one -on -one video conversation with somebody over Skype, or you can have a Skype conference call, but there is a limit to the number of people that you can uh, share the video with. Now, Facebook Live allows video to be streamed publicly. Anyone who has the app or is among your Facebook friends can tune in and start watching at any time, any time that you're broadcasting, that is. Also, unlike with regular TV, people can comment live, and that allows the person who's filming to view and respond to messages in real time. So how are people using Facebook Live? Well, if you were to tune in to a Facebook Live signal, either on your smartphone or on someone's Facebook page, you're going to see things like people doing workouts while their phone films them, people chatting over a cup of coffee or a mug of tea on a, you know, on a particular topic, uh, people lying in bed just staring into the camera. You know, it's so new. It's only been out uh, at the beginning of 2016 that some people just simply turn it on and just see exactly what it does. So you just find people lying in bed or sitting on the sofa staring into the camera. You'll find people playing musical instruments. Uh, you'll find people just simply talking randomly on any given subject that they want. Uh, you'll find people reading excerpts from books. You'll find people who are not really doing anything, but they just uh, are getting on with their lives and they're letting the viewers watch them as they do that. And you'll find a whole lot more besides, especially as the app gets to be more and more well known and people think of different uses for it. But what's exciting is what's likely to happen as the technology progresses and the concept catches on. Now, live video streaming allows you to truly have eyes everywhere and you can transport yourself anywhere in the world. And you can see what's going on through the eyes of others at the very moment that it's happening. Now, if you don't believe right now that live video streaming can get really big, then consider what would happen if there was a major world event right now. Now, let's assume that there's a big riot or a demonstration going on somewhere on the other side of the world to where you live. And let's imagine that there's a journalist in the press pack that's with the police at this demonstration. That journalist could have Facebook Live on their smartphone 
and they could start streaming from the middle of the demonstration, from the middle of the crowd. So you could get a really good idea as to what's going on. You, know, It would be literally just like being there. You would see everything happening unedited in real time. So again, it would be just as if you were with this person right there in the middle of the demonstration and you could see exactly what was going on. And in the future, we can also expect technology to progress and drive this forward further. Video fidelity will improve. You know, at the moment, um, there's HD, which is pretty much standard. This is what you're watching this video in. 4K is starting to come in and there's uh, 8K and 16K just around the corner as well. So you're going to have a lot more options. Plus, at the moment, you can only use Facebook Live on a smartphone, but you can expect that you'll be able to stream from other cameras like a GoPro or something like that in the not too distant future, I would assume. So again, this is so new that it's going to really take off and the options, you know, we're only just starting to scratch the surface of the sort of things that you can do with live streaming video. Okay, now let's look at a few stats. Now, Facebook Live is so new that there aren't a lot of stats yet. But let's take a look at some of the competition because Facebook Live is not you know, the first app that does this, although it does have a lot of features that some of the competitors don't have. And in particular, they don't have the power of Facebook behind them. Now, Periscope, which is probably Facebook Live's closest competitor, has over 10 million users. And Twitter purchased Periscope for an incredible $100 million before it launched. So you can see that Twitter saw the power of live streaming before Facebook did in many ways. Meerkat launched around the same time and it had 120,000 users by the end of the first month. Twitch, which streams live video games, had 12 billion users at the end of 2014. That's the last figures that are available. But you can bet it's probably more now. And Blab is another new streaming app which shows promise with incredible engagement and their average user spends 65 minutes a day watching videos on the platform. And even YouTube is starting to get into the act now and YouTube live streams some events and the E3 event in 2015 managed to attract a gigantic 8 million viewers within just 12 hours. So as you can see, this is fantastic news. People see the huge potential of live streaming and they're flocking to it. You should too. In this video, we're going to talk about some Facebook Live best practices, and these are as recommended by Facebook. Now, the first thing that Facebook recommend is that you let people know ahead of time when you're going to broadcast. And this is a very good idea because obviously you want to get as big an audience as possible and it's not like you publish a TV guide or something. So you want to let people know ahead of time when you're going to broadcast. Now, there are lots of ways that you can do this. I suppose the easiest way is via Facebook itself to uh, let your Facebook friends, let your Facebook followers know that you're going to be broadcasting via Facebook Live so that they can log in and watch your video at the time it's going to go out. You can also do a shout out to your followers on Twitter. And if you're aiming at a business audience, then probably making a post to your followers on LinkedIn would be a good idea as well. Uh, something else that you can do is to send an email to your list, of course, just like you would if you were holding um, a webinar or something like that. You would send an email to your list to let them know. And you can do that for Facebook Live and encourage them to sign up. And of course, you should post the date and time on your blog so that your blog followers can tune in. And also anybody who happens to find your blog through an internet search can also log in and find out when your broadcast is going out. You should also go live when you have a strong connection. Now, Wi-Fi tends to work best 
But if you can't find a nearby network, then you'll want a 4G connection. Now, I know that 4G isn't available everywhere. Um, in most countries, it's available just in large cities. But if you can find a 4G connection, then that's great. Otherwise, you'll want to have a Wi-Fi connection to uh, stream that. And if you have a weak signal, the Go Live button will be greyed out and you won't be able to broadcast. So you want to make sure that you've got that ahead of time before you start to uh, do your broadcast. When you're planning, when you're going to do it from, you want to make sure that it is somewhere where you're going to get a nice strong signal. You also want to write a compelling description before going live. And a great description will capture fans' attention and help them understand what your broadcast is all about. And that means they're more likely to watch it right through to the end and they're more likely to hear your message in its entirety. You should also ask your viewers to follow you and receive notifications when you go live. So call out that your audience can tap on the follow button on live videos and videos that were live and then opt in to get notifications the next time that you go live. So again, it uh, gives them more notifications so that they'll know ahead of time when your broadcast is going to go out. And you want to say hello to commenters by name and respond to their comments. Because one of the great things about Facebook Live is that you can communicate with your audience. They can send you comments which you can read as you're making your video and then you can respond to them in real time. And your audience will be thrilled to hear you mention their name and answer their questions when you're live. And you should broadcast for longer periods of time to reach more people. Because the longer you broadcast, the more people are likely to discover you and they're going to invite their friends on Facebook to watch the video. Now, Facebook recommends that you go live for at least 10 minutes and you can stay live for up to 90 minutes. So you've got a lot of scope there, a lot of time that you can use. And finally, Facebook recommend that you be creative and go live often. So you can try different types of broadcasts. You know, try giving a talk to camera, try giving um, a webinar or a live now, really, I suppose you could call it, over Facebook Live. Uh, you could try a how-to. Lots of different things just to keep your audience interested, to keep them coming back for more. Don't do the same thing over and over again because that's just going to be boring. And you should go live frequently to keep your audience engaged. You know, out of sight is out of mind, so you want to make sure that people keep coming back for more and that they see something that's going to interest them every time. So there you go, just a few Facebook Live best practices. Facebook Live is a fantastic app and it has lots of potential for the future and it's definitely a wave that you want to ride. But it's not perfect. So in this video, I want to examine some of the downsides of Facebook Live. And I suppose the biggest downside is that it's live, so mistakes can't be edited out. So if you do or say something stupid, or if something goes wrong, then everyone is going to know about it. So there's no taking it back, there's no second chance to do it again and get it right, like you can do if you're getting um, a YouTube video together or something like that. And while you'll never avoid banana skins completely, you can lessen the chances of an encounter. And that's by following what I call the three R's. Rehearse, rehearse, and rehearse. So you want to practice in front of a mirror until you've got your delivery perfect, especially if you're not used to being on camera. 
And you want to practice the stuff that you're going to do in your videos until you've got the routine right down to a T so that you know exactly what to do and you've tried it so often and you've done it so often you could do it in your sleep practically and then when you actually have to go ahead and do it live uh, then the chances of something actually going wrong are going to be reduced. Note I say reduced. Things might still go wrong but you'll lessen the chances of that happening. Another downside to Facebook Live, again because it's live, there's no music or editing to your videos. So, as I was just saying, you can't edit out mistakes. And you can't build atmosphere through adding music. Lots of people like to add some music to their videos to build the right sort of atmosphere. Well, you can't do that really in any type of Facebook Live video. In fact, there's no post-production of any kind. You know, it is what it is and it goes out live and what they see is what they get. In fact, the only way that you can have music in your videos is to have music being played in the background. But you must get the volume right though or it could be distracting and drown out what you're trying to say. And this can be a big problem because chances are you're not going to be monitoring the sound as it's going out either. So you never really know exactly how it's going to sound unless somebody sends you um, a message saying we can't hear you speak up or something like that. You can, though, save your videos for editing later. You can save them to the camera roll option that you have on Facebook Live. And this means that you can post them on video sites like YouTube in a more polished format. You can also post them on your Facebook timeline as a video as well. So it does give you that uh, flexibility. Another thing is it's so new that not many people know about it. And this is perhaps the biggest problem. You know, it was only launched at the beginning of 2016. Initially, it was only available in the US and then only on um, Apple iOS. And it's being rolled out to other countries and it's being rolled out on Android. But, of course, not every country has it. And, of course, you also need a 4G signal or Wi-Fi for it to work properly, which is another big problem, especially getting 4G. I know that most large cities in the U.S. have 4G. In other countries, uh, that's a bit slower. Uh, in rural areas, well, you know, it's just a distant dream, really. So you really do need to have a nice strong Wi-Fi signal in order to use it if uh, 4G isn't available. So, again, that's a big problem. And you'll need to tell your followers and subscribers, especially those who aren't on Facebook, about the app as well as your content. And this makes double the workload because you've got to convince people to, first of all, sign up for Facebook if they're not already members, and then to install the software on their smartphones or to uh, go to your Facebook page. You have to verify your Facebook page and it's a lot of hassle. And so it makes a lot of workload for you. And, of course, because it's live, it's not always a convenient time for your viewers to tune in and see your broadcast especially if they're in a different time zone. And this is something else, you know, if you happen to have um, a video up on YouTube, well, people can log in and watch it at their convenience. If it's going out live, then of course they've actually got to be there at that time. And they've got to have their computer or their smartphone or their tablet device on at that particular moment. And finally, it's not available in every country in the world yet. It's being rolled out, I think it's in about 40 countries at the time that I'm making this video. Uh, it's across the US and it's in a lot of uh, countries in Europe. But other places in the world, it's just simply not available. So if you have a far-flung audience, then they're not going to be able to see it at all. 
So there you go, just a few downsides to using Facebook Live. Facebook Live presents a range of opportunities for marketers, particularly for internet marketers. And I'm going to cover some of them in this video. Many marketers are already aware of the power of Facebook to build their brand, for audience awareness, and to create a buzz around product launches and so on. And of course, many marketers already harness the power of video on YouTube and other video sharing sites. Now, Facebook Live enables you to combine the best of both worlds and add an edge to the proceedings that comes from being live. You know, this is happening right now. The thing is, though, not many people are using Facebook Live for internet marketing purposes at the moment. Now, mainly it's used for streaming personal stuff, you know, stuff like this kid's birthday party that you can see on this phone. And this means that you're going to have a competitive edge over other marketers because not many marketers are using it. So you're going to be able to get out front and stay there. So when it comes to using Facebook Live for marketing purposes, your objectives are to, first of all, build a big audience of followers. And this is going to be in addition to those who already follow you on Facebook. And you want to build the trust of that audience. And the ways that you do that are by providing value and by being highly consistent. And really, this isn't much of a surprise. This is just what you would do on any other media. But what you want to do with Facebook Live is you'll want to get to the point where people are actively looking for your content and they're looking forward to see more of it. And because so much of the content on Facebook Live is rather amateurish right now, you can actually do this fairly easily. Simply come up with a format and make sure that the topic is nicely relevant to the nature of your niche. And you want to use the best production values that you can. So you want to make sure that the lighting is good, that the sound is good, that you've rehearsed your presentation, that you're not sort of umming and ahhing and that sort of thing, so that you can simply talk to the camera or you can do the uh, type of demonstration if you're doing a how-to video that makes you look really professional. So try to come up with a good theme and something to tie it all together and it's going to keep your audience interested. And there are other opportunities with something like Facebook Live as well. And, and it, you know, it doesn't hurt to add something that's more dynamic or something that's more interesting or something that you know, just has a personal touch occasionally. So to put it another way, take advantage of the medium. And if you have a following on Facebook already, then it's highly likely that they're going to be excited by the opportunity to see you live. You know, they may have um, seen other videos that you've posted on Facebook or on places like YouTube. They may have seen the pictures that you've got on Facebook. But to actually have you there talking to them live, they're going to be interested in that. They'll know then that you really are a real person. And it also means that you can make more dynamic and interesting content that's going to benefit from being live. You know, let me give you some examples. So, for example, if you have a travel blog and an associated Facebook page, then you can live stream from whatever exotic locations you happen to be at. And it'll be like people really are there with you at that moment because you're sharing that time with them. And of course, Facebook Live is interactive. People can send you questions and you can answer them live on air. So that does have that element to it. So it is really like they are there with you in whatever location that you've traveled to. Likewise, if you're in the fitness niche, you can do personalized training sessions where people can send you comments and questions as the session progresses. 
and it'll be just like having a personal trainer come into someone's home and it could do wonders for building your brand and building your credibility because if somebody sends you a question about how do I do this particular exercise uh, or you know let's say it's a yoga blog like this lady here and someone sends in a message saying how do you do this particular move or this particular position and she could demonstrate it right there and then live that's going to add tremendous credibility because people can see you know, yes she does know what she's talking about you know that sort of thing and of course you're going to combine this with strong branding on your website a strong social media presence on Facebook and elsewhere and promotional events that drive more people to your videos now there's not much scope for direct sales via Facebook Live at present. But let's take a slightly different view here. Take a slightly, you know, gaze into your marketing crystal ball for a moment and just have a think here. Now, Google's parent company, Alphabet, had net quarterly revenue of $5.25 billion dollars in the first quarter of 2016. A hefty chunk of that came from selling advertising on YouTube and YouTube videos. Well, you can see where this is heading, can't you? While the advantages of Facebook Live to online businesses can be fairly obvious, there is actually tremendous scope for offline businesses to use Facebook Live to get more business and to get more people through the door. Now, many offline businesses already harness the power of Facebook to build their brand and to encourage customers to visit. Now, with Facebook Live, you can take that to the next level. You can give some personality and you can show what's going on behind the scenes. And this is one exciting type of content that offline businesses can use. And again, it builds trust. It builds trust in the business and in the brand. Let me give you some examples. Now, let's say you own a restaurant. A big concern for a lot of people is kitchen cleanliness. You often read in local newspapers or see on local TV news about how a certain restaurant has been raided by the health department and shut down and you hear horror stories about people who've got food poisoning and all the rest of it. So some people are a bit wary about eating in certain restaurants because they're not sure how clean it is behind the scenes. Well, let's say you could do a behind the scenes tour if you happen to own a restaurant and you can show the standard of hygiene and cleanliness in your restaurant kitchen to reassure customers that your food is safe uh, that you take hygiene seriously and so on or another thing that you could do if you have a restaurant is you could have your chef prepare a new dish you could show the audience your chef actually putting this dish together, actually cooking it right there in front of their very eyes live so they know that there's nothing being edited around. They know that this is actually happening at the time that they're watching it. And then you could, uh, say, offer a discount to uh, anyone who makes a reservation in you know, X minutes quoting a reference code that they'll be able to have this particular new dish at a discount. And especially if you're running a restaurant and it's a slow night, there's not a lot of people coming in, this might help to get people through the doors. Something else that you could do if you own um, a bricks and mortar store and you're opening a new store or you're introducing a new product line, you could give a sneak peek behind the scenes. You could give a virtual tour of your new store um, before it opens. You should give an idea as to the new product line and that's going to give you a competitive edge and it's going to generate interest and it's going to make more people be inclined to come through the door. You can also use Facebook Live to do Q&As for your business, you know, a question and answer session. And you can use it, as you're saying, to show off products 
and you can use it to do special offers. You know, you can give um, a discount code out over Facebook Live and say that anybody who comes in within the next X number of days with that discount code can get 10% off or get something for free. And that's going to encourage people to come in. And if you're launching some kind of event, then this is the perfect opportunity to get people involved because you can get the word out and you can actually, you know, it's like you're talking to them about it one on one. If your business isn't focused on media creation and internet marketing, then you probably don't want to invest all of your time into creating content for the web. However, what you can do is stream events interviews, Q&As and backstage passes and then promote those via Facebook and other social media. And these will both help you to build more brand visibility and trust with your existing fans and it's going to help new people to discover your organization. What you could do is simply set up a camera in the corner of your room and the longer you leave it running, the more followers you'll get. And there's no reason for you to have to change your routine at all if you have an exciting and bustling business. And with Facebook Live, at the time that I'm making this video, you can actually stream for up to 90 minutes. So it's an hour and a half to let people see what it's like behind the scenes in your organization. You know, and it's, it's a bit like a webcam but it's streamed via Facebook Live. You'll need to get another smartphone or tablet to do this, and you'll also need a good Wi-Fi connection. And if your premises are open to the public, you know, if you've got um, a shop or a bricks and mortar store, then you'll want to put the camera somewhere where it's not likely to get stolen, uh, such as the times we live in now. And of course, you won't be able to use it for anything else at the same time. So, it might be something you could put your old iPhone to good use and you know, it's a good excuse to get another one. In this video, I want to talk about how musicians can use Facebook Live because harnessing the power of Facebook and Facebook Live can really help get your band or get your music noticed. Now, of course, back in the old days, it was very hard to get your band noticed. You had to play in clubs, uh, you had to play at venues and concerts, you might even have to go busking in the street or on the London Underground to get your audience's attention so that they would actually hear your music, so they would know who you were and really get the word out there. And, of course, you're at the mercy of... Um, unscrupulous promoters who might try to rip you off along the way. Then came the internet and the rise of social media sites and MySpace became particularly popular with musicians but let's face it how many people use MySpace anymore? Facebook soon became the de facto place for musicians to find fans. Up-and-coming bands use it and even long-established acts like the Rolling Stones have a presence on Facebook. And Facebook Live really takes this to the next level. Because Facebook Live lets your audience see and hear you. Now, I know that you can do this already with YouTube, but Facebook Live adds an extra live edge to things. And you can use this to build your following or your fan base. You can bring yourself or your band to the attention of record companies, to the attention of um, promoters and to A&R people. And one way that you can do this is to live stream concerts exclusively for your followers. So your followers will get to hear your new song before anybody else. Uh, they'll get to hear your band play special concerts just for them. You know, this is very powerful stuff. You can hold a special private concert for your fans that nobody else, nobody else who isn't following you on Facebook Live is going to be allowed to see. So that's very powerful because it means that uh, you're tying in your audience because you're giving them something special, something that nobody else can have. 
And you can also hold Q&As, you know, question and answer sessions about your band uh, where people can send you uh, questions and you can answer them live on air. And they can also make comments while uh, you're doing this so they can send you um, questions while uh, the Q&A session is in progress. Or you could play requests. You know, you could get people to message you and ask you to play a particular number and you can simply play that exclusively for the person who's requested it. You know, that, that that's pretty powerful stuff. And you can stream up to 90 minutes, which is plenty of time, really. So you can really can give your followers really good value there. And of course, this isn't just for people who are singers or people who are in rock or pop bands either. You know, it can fit any type of musical genre. If you're a country western singer or a band, or if you're a jazz musician, or even a classical musician, you know, like a concert pianist or something, you can still use these techniques to reach a wider audience. And even once you're an established band, you know, I'm waiting to see the first Rolling Stones concert over Facebook Live. I'm sure it'll be coming at some point in the future. So there you go, just a few ways that musicians can use Facebook Live. One of the things that Facebook recommend when it comes to Facebook Live is that you should be creative and you should broadcast often. And I'm going to delve a bit deeper into this topic in this video. Now, why should you be creative and broadcast often? Well, I suppose the main reason is to avoid being boring. If you're just going to do the same old presentation time and time again, you're going to drive people away. So you want to make sure that when you're giving your presentations, if you're giving a presentation to camera, it's on a slightly different topic, that you use a slightly different technique, different camera angles, maybe from a different location, that sort of thing. Because as the old saying goes, variety tis the spice of life. So try broadcasting from different locations. Now, obviously, provided that there's a Wi-Fi or a 4G signal, of course. Or you can talk about different topics to do with your niche. You know, you might perhaps give a demonstration uh, of a product. If you sell um, a physical product as an affiliate, you could actually demonstrate how this works live on air and then you could have the link to buy it uh, in your Facebook page. You could perhaps, if you're an internet marketer, you're in the IM niche, you could talk about a particular aspect of internet marketing, a different one every time. You might be able to do that from a different location, provide you've got somebody else to hold the smartphone, of course, they might watch over your shoulder while you're doing something online exactly at that moment that sort of thing so it's going to give people lots of different reasons to tune in because each episode is going to be different and if you think about it if you watch uh, a chat show you know uh, there's all sorts of chat shows in different countries all over the world you'll find that they follow a similar format but they have different interesting people on every time and that's something that you might also want to do uh, as part of a Facebook live stream is to interview people and have a different person on every time and you're just going to keep it interesting it's just going to keep it varied something else that you want to do is to broadcast at regular times to build a following and you want to let people know ahead of time when your broadcast is going out and you want to build anticipation and you want to build referrals. Because if people watch one broadcast on Facebook Live that you've done, they're likely to tell their friends, particularly their Facebook friends about it. And then you can build your following exponentially because uh, they will tune in and watch and tell their friends and their friends and so on. And of course, Another reason to broadcast often is that old saying, out of sight, out of mind. 
People may tune in once out of curiosity just to see who you are and what you're talking about. And perhaps they may have um, got an email from you in the past or they may have bought one of your products, that sort of thing. So they might tune in once just to make sure that you are really a real person and see what you look like and hear what you sound like and that sort of thing. But they'll soon forget about you if you don't keep giving them a reason to come back. So you do need to make sure that you broadcast regularly and that you vary the topics that you broadcast on. And when you give them a regular date for their diary and your videos are entertaining and informative, they'll come back time and time again. And of course, Facebook Live is so new it's launched at the beginning of 2016 so you're practically guaranteed an audience and of course it's unlikely that many marketers in your niche are using it yet so this gives you an edge because you're going to be the go-to guy or go-to girl in your niche that people tune into on Facebook live and this gives you the opportunity to get out in front and to stay there. Everybody else is going to be playing catch up. So you can make sure that you stay ahead of the curve. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the types of videos that work well on Facebook Live. And probably the most successful type of video on Facebook Live are how to's. Now, when you're demonstrating how to do something live in real time, it can be really powerful because lots of people are cynical when it comes to watching how-to videos on sites like YouTube or how-to programs on TV. They know that lots of editing and manipulation goes on behind the scenes, and so what you see is not always what you're going to get. There's a very popular program on UK television at the moment where they fix up old cars. And you can just tell that there's a whole lot of stuff that they're not showing you. The, you know, the car always starts first time every time when they fixed it up. And you think to yourself, especially if you've had any experience of doing anything with cars, you know that things never actually work that smoothly, that they probably had to have umpteen different takes and lots of tweaking about to try and get that car to start up after they've uh, installed the new engine. But of course, when you see it on the program, the guy puts the key in the ignition, turns the key, vroom, away it goes. And you know, you can get a bit cynical, so you know that no, it probably really didn't happen exactly like that. But the thing is, when it's live, they see it being done in real time, and they'll be able to see how easy it really is, or how difficult it really is. You know, you're not pulling any punches when it comes to showing things uh, on Facebook Live. You see exactly what's going on. Now, of course, you'll want to practice a lot beforehand so that everything runs smoothly and you don't end up looking stupid uh, if the engine really doesn't start. But because it's live, because people can actually see it being done in real time, it'll give people a lot more confidence in the thing that you're demonstrating the how-to because people will see that it is possible to do it. Another type of video that does very well on live streaming on Facebook Live is what's known as the Ask Me Anything video. And this is actually probably the simplest type of video to do because all you've got to do is sit there and answer questions that your viewers submit to you uh, via the app and you simply answer them live on air. And this does several things. First of all, it can boost your credibility and it can show that you really do know what you're talking about because people can send you a question. You can say, you know, here we have a question from such and such. He or she wants to know this, that and the other. And then you can explain and it really does show you as an expert. But of course, you want to make sure that you've boned up on the subject ahead of time, that you can anticipate a bit the sort of questions that people are going to ask you so that you can uh, answer the questions off the cuff and sound really knowledgeable. Another type of video that does well are countdowns. Now, you can build a buzz around your product launch by counting down 
how many days or hours there are until your product goes live and you can reveal a different interesting fact every time and this can be questions that people have submitted about it you can perhaps build curiosity show a little bit about your product perhaps read a bit from your ebook if you're publishing an ebook just a little snippet every time just to give people uh, a little bit of information every time that they go and broadcast or, or that you go and broadcast and you can also reveal that your product is live via a Facebook live stream and perhaps give viewers a discount coupon or a code at the launch that would ensure that the word spreads and that you get more viewers at future launches. And then there are interviews. And again, get people to submit questions via the app and get your guests to answer them live on air. And if you've ever watched uh, chat shows on TV, you'll know that having a different guest to be interviewed every time keeps people coming back because it keeps the content fresh. It keeps it different. It gives people a reason to keep coming back to watch. And of course, this is also a subtle way to do direct selling as your guest can plug his or her product and people can purchase it via your affiliate link. So yeah, there aren't very many ways to do direct selling on Facebook Live at the moment, but this is certainly one way that you can do it. And then there are debates and discussions. You can get lots of different people together. You can start to have a debate and viewers can submit questions via the app and can contribute to the debate just as if they were there really. So again, that's a very powerful way. It's a very powerful uh, way of getting your message across and it's something that people tune in and want to see and these types of videos are actually quite popular. Then there are talks, you know, people talking over lunch, over the breakfast, while they're on the commute. You know, if you're stuck on a train and it's the third time this week that the train's been late, well, you could shout out to your followers on Facebook and say, look, here, I'm stuck on the 815 again. And when are they going to do something about this? You know, commuters like a good old moan occasionally. And you can share your views with the world on any topic. And, you know, some people find the minutiae of other people's lives fascinating. And quite frankly, there's so little on Facebook Live right now that you're practically guaranteed an audience. And then there are Let's Plays for games. And in these sort of videos, you can reveal tactics for playing certain video games. You can show people how to get to the next level. You can share tactics. You can get feedback from other gamers. And you could perhaps have a gaming circle where each participant live streams from their perspective on a certain date and time so that you can really interact with each other as well as with anyone who happens to be watching. And these sorts of videos are always popular and then there are workouts and if you're in the fitness niche then this can really be a boon because you're showing people exactly how it's done and this can really boost your credibility because people can see that you really do know what you're talking about and it's like having a personal trainer come into people's homes and of course, as you're doing the workouts, you can get feedback from viewers, you can get questions that you can answer in real time. So it, as I said, it does really build and boost your credibility. And of course, you can use it as a teaser for your next fitness video. You can say, you know, I don't have time to demonstrate these other moves, but in my next video, blah, 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 blah. So you can see you can actually use that for sales purposes as well. And cooking and recipes are always popular. You can actually show someone in real time how to cook a particular dish. Uh, you can show them how the ingredients go together. There's no editing, so they'll know that the procedure that you're following is the exact procedure that they need to follow in order to get the same results. And there's a whole bunch of other ones that you can have as well. You can do things like product reviews. They're always very popular because you can actually demonstrate live on air how a particular product works. Then things like life hacks. 
tutorials behind the scenes are very popular especially in the business niche you can see people at work if you run a, a store for example or a shop you can have that and people can see exactly what's going on at the time a day in the life you can broadcast at different times throughout the day and tell people what you're doing and quite frankly just about any subject you can think of is likely to be popular on facebook live because it's so new so although we've covered quite a few in this video your idea could be the next one that really takes off in this video i'm going to talk you through how you can go about organizing a live in r now a live in r is like a webinar but it's held over facebook live now, the first thing to do is to decide on your topic. And the best way to do that is to simply ask your followers what they want to learn about. And you can do that ahead of time by emailing your list. Uh, you can post something on Facebook and get people to respond. You could perhaps mention it in a previous live stream that you're going to be doing a live webinar and what would you like to know about? And people can submit comments and you can uh, come up with some ideas that way. But one thing that you should do is you want to keep the topic niche. You want to keep it nice and narrow because you don't want to bore your audience. You don't want to drone on for too long. You can talk for up to 90 minutes, but quite frankly, I think you're going to start losing people's attention way before then. So you want to keep the topic niche. And of course, bear in mind that if people have lots of different things that they want to learn about, if your followers have lots of different things they want to learn about, you can do a separate live and hour on each one of those and that gives people a reason to come back and keep following you and keep listening to your live streams or watching your live streams you also need to pick a time and date that's convenient for your audience now bear in mind this is going to be going out live and your audience is going to be in different time zones now of course if you're aiming this at people who are all in one country, then that is probably easier than aiming it at a global audience. So for example, if you're in uh, the continental US, you've only got four time zones to worry about. If you're in the UK, you've only got one time zone to worry about. So that, that, that sort of thing. Whereas if you're going for a global audience, then you've got 24 different time zones to worry about. So you do need to make sure that you are going out at a time that your audience can tune in and watch. And you want to do your homework. You want to research your topic thoroughly. You want to find out all that there is to know about it, because after all, when you're doing a live webinar, you're the expert. If you're doing a live webinar with another person, then you'll have to be in the same place at the same time. It's not like if you're doing a webinar where you can be in separate places and you can talk to each other via the internet. Because if you're doing a live webinar, it's going to have to be filmed on your smartphone. So you're going to have to be physically in the same place at the same time. So you can go to them, they can come to you, or you can meet them somewhere and do your live and art at a place that's convenient for both of you. Whatever you decide to do, you want to hold your live and art somewhere quiet with a good Wi-Fi or 4G signal. So you want to check out the venue ahead of time if it's not going to be in your home or your office. You want to make sure that if you're going to meet someone somewhere else or you're going to go to their office or their home, that there is a good Wi-Fi signal. And you want to make sure that the set looks tidy and that the lighting is done properly. Because bear in mind that people are going to be looking at the set the whole time that you're on camera. So you want to make sure that there's nothing out of place because you don't want anything to distract from you or your guest and the message that you're putting across. And the same goes for the lighting, because if it looks 
amateurish then that's going to put people off you want to have the same sort of lighting that people will get if they see you on tv or if they go to the movies and ideally what you want to aim for is what's known as rembrandt lighting and this is the sort of lighting techniques that rembrandt used in his pictures and you can see from his self-portrait here that the way that he's painted it is that the light is stronger on one side of his face than on the other. And that's the sort of technique that you want to reproduce in your videos. And something else you want to do is have an agenda to work through. And this will ensure that you move smoothly through the presentation and you don't miss anything out. So you could have note cards or cue cards or just simply a piece of paper with the uh, schedule written through it, the agenda, so that you know that you're going to be covering this topic first and then that topic and then the other topic and that sort of thing. And of course, you want to rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. You want to make sure that your delivery is perfect. You don't want to be hesitating. You don't want a lot of your know, ums and ahs and that sort of thing because it just sounds very unprofessional. So you want to make sure that you at least sound like you know what you're talking about and you look like you know what you're talking about because if you're nervous, if you don't really come across as being confident, then that is going to spoil your presentation. So you want to practice your delivery in the mirror until you're confident about giving a polished performance. So go somewhere private and practice just talking to yourself in the mirror. It feels a bit strange when you first do it, but that is the best way to find out exactly how you're going to come across. Or of course, if you have a video camera, you can video yourself talking to camera and play it back and watch it. But do bear in mind though, that this is gonna be going out live. So any mistakes are not gonna be able to be edited out unlike on video. And then you wanna get the word out about your live enough. And there are lots of different ways that you can do that. On Facebook, of course, you can let your Facebook friends and your followers know that you're going to be holding this live enough. And you can use other social media as well. Twitter is a good way because you can simply send out a short message to your Twitter followers. And also LinkedIn, if you're aiming at a business niche. You know, lots of people who have a presence on LinkedIn also have a presence on Facebook for their business. So you can work the two together and get the word out that way. Of course, your mailing list is probably the best way to get the word out. Everyone who's subscribed to your newsletter, uh, everyone who's bought a product from you, you want to let them know about your live and hour. And also your blog subscribers. Anyone who's subscribing to your blog, you can put a post in your blog to tell people that you're going to be holding this live and hour and when and give them instructions as to how they can sign up and how they can watch it. You also want to remind people in the days and hours running up to your live and hour that it's going to go ahead and give them the date and the time. And again, because Facebook Live is so new and lots of people won't have heard about it, you'll have to remind people how they can tune in and watch it. Something else as well that you want to have is a Q&A as part of your live and hour. You can get people to submit questions to you via the app and you can answer them in real time. And it's a good idea to mention them by name. You know, here we've got a, a question from Fred or here we've got a question from Jane and answer them in real time and quote them. And that can really tie you and the audience together. And people really do like that. Something else that you can do finally is you can record your live and hour and you can post the video on uh, your Facebook timeline and you can also post it on YouTube and other video sharing sites but if you do that you want to be sure to edit something out and you want to make sure that people know it's been edited out because this will give them an incentive to tune in and watch your next live and our live so you don't give them everything when they tune in and watch your video off of a site like YouTube. So that will 
encourage people to actually tune in and follow you on Facebook and watch your next live in art. So there you go. You could very well be one of the first people in your niche to hold a live in art, and I wish you every success. There are lots of ways that you can integrate Facebook Live with other social media, and I'm going to talk about that in this video. I suppose the easiest social media to integrate Facebook Live with is Facebook itself. And Facebook give you some pretty comprehensive instructions on the site as to how you go about doing it. Now, Facebook have some instructions on their help center that show you how you can share live videos. And as they say here, this feature isn't available to everyone right now. And they say that to start a live broadcast, what you have to do is log into the Facebook iOS app or Facebook Android app. Tap the uh, little icon at the top that looks like a pencil in a square at the top of the timeline, newsfeed or page. Then you tap the other icon that looks like a little man with a halo. And then you can write an optional description for your broadcast. And then you can tap go live to begin your broadcast. When you want to end your broadcast, tap finish. And your broadcast can be no longer than 90 minutes. And when you end your broadcast, it'll stay on your timeline or page like any other video. And it does say that you can block viewers during a live broadcast by tapping on the profile picture next to a customer's comment and then tapping block. And then you can also unblock someone that you've previously blocked. You can also hear, also on the Help Center, they have instructions as to how you can share a live video in an event or group. And again, it says to share a live video, go to that event or group from the Facebook, iOS or Android app. Tap the box that says write something. Tap the icon that looks like the little man with a halo. Write a brief description. Tap go live to start three second countdown to broadcast. And then to stop broadcasting, tap finish at the bottom of the screen. Now, these are the instructions that they have at present but things change quite rapidly on the internet and this is a brand new app and it is still evolving. So what I recommend is that you go to the Facebook Help Center and do a search where it says, how can we help you for things like, how do I share a live video in an event or group? Or how do I share a live video on Facebook? Just to make sure that these instructions are current because as I say, they can change from time to time. Now, a note of caution here. There are some restrictions on integrating Facebook Live and your Facebook page. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about them here because things are changing so quickly that by the time you come to see this video, they may have been taken off. Plus, of course, some restrictions vary from country to country. So you do need to play it by ear, really, when it comes to integrating Facebook and Facebook Live and just see what's available in your country. And also take a look on the Facebook website for their notifications about some of the restrictions to your Facebook Live because it is so new and it is being rolled out. Another way that you can get the word out about your Facebook Live broadcast is to use Twitter. And you can tweet about forthcoming Facebook Live broadcasts. And this is a way to get the word out about your live broadcasts and about your saved videos. Although do bear in mind that Twitter does own Periscope, so you don't really want to do this too often in case they sort of, you know, rather take umbrage about it and shut your account down. So do be careful when trying to promote Facebook Live via Twitter. But uh, every once in a while, I don't think it could really hurt. And then there's YouTube. And you really can do a great partnership between your Facebook Live broadcast and YouTube. What you can do is save it to your camera roll when you're recording your video. And you can edit the video to make it more polished and more professional. Then you upload it to YouTube and your followers will be notified. And what you can do is include a link to your Facebook page in the description. 
and then people will know where you are they'll know that you are on facebook live and they can be notified when your next live broadcast goes out so you can work the two together very very easily and of course probably the best way to integrate facebook live with other media is with your own blog or your own website so you can give details of your next or previous live broadcasts you can link to saved videos that are part of your Facebook timeline. And you can embed videos that you've saved to YouTube. And people can go and watch them. And then they'll know, like I was just saying, what your Facebook Live link is. And they'll know how to sign up and watch your next videos live. So you can use your YouTube videos as a trailer to get people to watch your next Facebook Live sessions. So there you go, just some ways that you can integrate Facebook Live and other media.